Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about a very exciting topic to me and one of the most frequently asked questions that I get and it is how to start a career in machine learning engineering. First of all, there is this notion that you have to hold a computer science major, a math major or a PhD to become a machine learning engineer. I'm gonna tell you something, that's completely false. I studied acoustics and image processing and then I completed a master's in computer vision. I don't hold a computer science major, I don't hold a math major and I don't hold a PhD. I'm going to give you a roadmap to follow as a beginner. There are five principal points that we're going to touch upon during this video. You need to learn a programming language. You need to sharpen your math skills. You need to understand the basics of machine learning algorithms. You need to practice the algorithms with coding and you need to find real life problems. There are a lot of debates around this question and I'm going to tell you that you can use any programming language that suits you the best. However, if you don't know any programming language at all, I will recommend you to start with Python. Python is a very common general purpose language, which is very suitable for machine learning because of the amount of existing libraries for this field. Another thing that is very good for Python is that it's very easy to use and the learning curve is not as steep as for other programming languages. Another aspect why I recommend Python is that it's widely used. So if you're a beginner and you're going to start looking for resources, then you're going to realize that most of the answers, most of the resources are written in Python. Second point, your math skills. I read a lot the question do I need to know math for machine learning? Well, yes and no. I don't agree with the fact that people say that you don't need math to be a machine learning engineer. The reason people say this is because there are so many high level machine learning libraries out there that it is very easy to make a model just with one line of code. Okay, but there are a lot of different things that you need to know when making that model work. You need to know how to set the parameters. You need to know which model to use based on your data, for example. So you do need to know the math behind those algorithms. If you're going to be working as a machine learning software engineer covering the position that I'm currently covering, I advise you to know math because you're going to be building models from scratch and you're going to be doing some certain algorithms that you need to read from paper and translate it into your code. And it is important that you understand what are those equations are doing and how that um, affects your data. Before getting into any type of machine learning algorithm, is it really important that you have a list of problems that you want to solve so you can understand better why the need of the different algorithms it's it's the best way to go about it prior to just digging into all those algorithms and memorizing them don't memorize and trying to apply it to random data don't do that so there are three main problems that you can solve in machine learning but as a beginner you should focus on the main two supervised problems and unsupervised problems the main difference between the two approaches is that supervised learning will have data that consists of features and those features will have a label and unsupervised would just be a set of features without any label. It is really important that you understand the distinction between supervised and unsupervised learning problems because that's basically what is going to define the type of algorithms that you're going to use and it's going to define what type of data you need. And this is really important in real life applications. If you're working with uh, face recognition, let's say, you will probably have a set of faces as image and each of the images will have attached a label with the name of the person corresponding to the face. And that's how you can make uh, real life applications with supervised learning. 
Then you have unsupervised problems. So for example, you have a set of customers that you want to group based on their purchasing power. So once you understand the type of problem that you have, it is very important to have data. So a very common data set that I always tell beginners that they can start with is the IRS data set. It is a very small data set. It only contains 150 instances, but it can be used for both supervised and unsupervised learning algorithms. So you can just use this data set to understand how the different algorithms work. So under the supervised problem, you can also have two different types of problems. You can have the classification problems or you can have the regression problem. So for those type of problems, you can start up with the most easy type of algorithms, which would be uh, linear regression, logistic regression, uh, k-nearest neighbor, uh, support vector machines, and then you can scale a bit up to algorithms like decision trees or random forests. And once you have a solid understanding of how those supervised algorithms work, then you can start digging a bit more into the unsupervised learning algorithms. And I would go through the easiest problem that you can solve, which is clustering, and try to do some Kenyan's clustering on the IRIS dataset and see how they naturally, naturally group in the three different classes. Or you can try other algorithms such dbscan or hierarchical clustering and see if you can get similar or same result. Don't learn neural networks as the first thing you learn from machine learning because it's going to be a chaos. You need to learn the classical machine learning algorithms prior to the neural networks. In neural networks, it's not always the best solution. If you have a small amount of data, you need the classical machine learning approaches and most likely you're gonna have to use them as a baseline for neural networks after. So that's how you should uh, go about it. That's how I think you should go about it. And then after the solid understanding of the neural networks, then you can go with more complex architectures like the convolution neural network. Then as an advice, and on top of everything that I've said before, if you can find your niche in machine learning, it's the best way to go about it. So I found my niche on images. I studied image processing, then I did computer vision. So I just basically applied machine learning to what I already knew from before, which was images and how to process images. So if you find a niche, like, um, as I said, computer vision, like natural language processing, uh, business intelligence, um, everything comes easier. So let's make a brief summary of what we have learned from this video. So I told you that you don't need a PhD to become a machine learning engineer such as myself. You should start learning a programming language if you don't have any um, knowledge about it, if you haven't ever code. And if you have never tried that, you should start with Python, but you can use any type of programming language for machine learning. You don't need a lot of understanding of math, but it depends on the job that you're going to be working on. So if you're working on something from scratch, it is very important that you understand all the process behind those algorithms and how multiplications are being done, how linear algebra works in general. You should um, understand what is the problem before getting into the machine learning algorithms. So you can understand better what type of data to collect and how to apply the algorithms. And if possible, find your niche. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did when I was making it. If you found this video useful, please like and comment. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.